No the credibility. Tim Grosser. Mr Speaker, we've just heard the most extraordinary claim from the opposition finance spokesperson. He got up and started his address by agreeing with the ACT Party that the government was borrowing too much per month. This is the member who spent the whole of 2009 asking for more and more stimulus, more and more debt. He recklessly proposed that New Zealand would have gone into massive additional debt during the largest recession that the world has seen in 70 years, and he has the gall to come and say that we are borrowing too much money. This is quite an extraordinary about face. Quite an extraordinary about face. He is also a member, was a member of the previous government that led this situation whereby New Zealand, through a debt-fuelled consumption growth, had got its net debt up to the level of Portugal, Ireland, Greece and Spain. This is the most extraordinary series of statements. He is imagining the past and remembering the future, Mr Speaker. Let us just sit down and look at the situation a little more calmly, with a little more accuracy. Every adult, every adult that is interested enough in this country in current affairs to turn the television on in the evening, or to turn the radio on and listen in the morning or the afternoon, will be well aware of what is going on internationally. And even if they take only one simple message from this, actually this still dangerous situation in the major centres of developed power on both sides of the Atlantic, the message they will be taking is this. Fiscal prudence matters. Finally, you run the risk of running out of other people's money. That's the message, Mr Cunliffe. They are not listening to you. They will be listening to what you said the policies that you supported as a member of the previous government, and they'll be making their decision in November. When they will be making that decision, they will remember exactly what we inherited in 2008. Mr English, our Minister of Finance, has laid out the broad outlines of this. First of all, an economy that had recorded less than 1% growth on average every year in the three years leading up to 2008. They will remember that not a single job had been added in the traded sector, the internationally competitive side of our economy, since 2004. Those are the facts that they will remember when they make their decision. That is what they will remember, Mr Speaker. They will remember that Crown expenditure mushroomed from 32 billion to 60 billion over eight years. Those are facts. And then in 2008, on the top of what was really a completely failing policy, productivity having tanked as well, Lehman Brothers comes along and causes this recession. We then are elected by the people of New Zealand. The Treasury tells us what the real state of New Zealand is. We're looking at effectively permanent deficits for the next 10 years, a highly dangerous situation in any event, but potentially lethal in a situation that we've been looking at internationally over the last two years, where people get very nervous about lending ever-increasing amounts of money to countries that have not got the elementary facts of economic life in the right space. So this is a situation which we're seeing played out right now internationally. If we take the most extreme of the Portugal, Ireland, Greece and Spain, Bills are not being paid in Greece now for basic pharmaceuticals. We are seeing a situation where in the railway sector, the wages exceeded the total revenue in railways by something like 60%. So finally, in those extreme situations, you learn the hard way. You do run out of other people's money. So what we have done is set about changing the track, and that is going to frame the election debate in all aspects at the end of this year.
The Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. The Savings Working Group reported to the government earlier this year, and I quote, the economy, that's the New Zealand economy, faces serious structural and other problems. What structural problems were they referring to? Primarily the fact that we are not earning our way in the world. They weren't so worried about government debt. Government debt is bad under this, under this government. It's worse than it was because we've got a $16 billion deficit. But the greater problem in New Zealand is that approximately 86% of New Zealand's overseas debt is private, and that amount is going up every year and is projected under the government's own budget to go up every year because every year from here the current account deficit gets worse and that hole is plugged by more borrowing from overseas, meaning that New Zealand gets poorer every year to the end of the government's projection period. I'm not talking about the government deficit here. I'm talking about the overall wealth of our nation, including both public and private debt. The government's own projections show us at the end of their projection period, if they're New Zealand's unfortunate enough to have a national government re-elected for another term, at the end of that, New Zealand gets poorer, and then in the next year they get poorer, and then the next year they get poorer still. And that's why the Savings Working Group said New Zealand's got structural working problems, and they're right. The Treasury agrees, and if you've got a structural problem, you need a structural fix. You need to pull the levers that the government can pull in order to get investment going into the right section of the economy, to grow your economy, to grow your exports, and to grow jobs, and to reduce debt. Mr Speaker, Gareth Morgan said of the lack of a capital gains tax, quotes, this lack of a capital gains tax is, quotes, the biggest tax wrought in the country and one that has cost us all dearly in terms of efficient allocation of capital, economic growth and employment. Westpac Chief Economist Dominic Stevens said, New Zealanders are incentivised to borrow money to buy land rather than invest in productive assets. If we introduced a capital gains tax, that incentive would be diminished and there would be a greater incentive for people to save via bank deposits or productive business ownership. He's not the only one who thinks that the Labour Party tax switch is a good idea. New Zealand Manufacturers and Exporters Association say the eradication of the capital gains tax harbour will help lift productive investment. A more balanced tax system will see investment flow to the most intrinsically profitable areas of the economy rather than those that are tax advantage. The Productive Economy Council said the same thing. A capital gains tax sends the right signals for investors and means those choosing to take the path of unproductive property investment will have to pay their fair share of tax. While fairness in tax is good, the real long-term benefit is the chance to get more of our limited capital invested in New Zealand's more, not less, competitive areas. Mr Speaker, uh, as a consequence of that in part, we've had comments like this from John Rowan at the New Zealand Herald. Tax-free capital gains on property investment is the one crippling flaw remaining in our economy. Economists know it. Accountants know it, even if they don't like it. Politicians of every party know it, though none have had the courage to do anything about it. That is, until Phil Goff and the Labour Party have taken this on. The Dominion said the same thing. There's a gaping hole in the tax system. Different sources of income are taxed differently. Earn $50,000 by working 40 hours a week and you'll be taxed at the going rate for income. Made a $50,000 profit on the sale of a rental property and you will not be taxed at all. Even the NBR says capital gains and property taxes may be touchstone issues because of the logic of taxing all income regardless of source. Patrick Smalley pointed out that the Minister of Finance's Bill English's own poll came out 88 per cent in favour of our proposal, but still the rudderless National Party without a plan for the economy puts their head in the sand, accuses us of uh, tax and spend. They cut one tax and increase another, and it's a tax switch. They say then we cut one tax and increase another, that it's tax and spend. Patently, it is not. This is a tax switch which enables 98% of New Zealanders to get an income tax cut. It enables us to pay off debt faster than the national government was going to do and return to surplus in the same year in which the national government was going to. Mr Speaker, this is good policy. The National Party are on the wrong side of this debate. Tim McIndoe. Stranger, well, how much regret that, but utterly...